pawn up to e4 and pawn up to c5 constitutes the Sicilian defense. And usually you would play some knight to f3, knight to c3, pawn to d4, and go into some main line that has been analyzed to absolute death. However, in this video, I'm going to show you a relatively new gambit that is extremely fun, will take any Sicilian player out of theory, and only occurs in less than 1% of Sicilian games. That move I'm talking about is pawn up to a3, the Mangerini variation. And this move might look pointless at first, but the idea is after knight to c6, to play pawn up to b4 and go into a delayed wing gambit. And I can guarantee you, if you know your stuff, once you have this position on the board, you will win at least 60% of your games. Okay, so the thing about this pawn to b4 move is that it has to come after black plays knight to c6. And in this position, that is the most popular and objectively best move. However, I recognize you also get some various pawn to d6 and pawn to e6 and pawn to g6 and some other lines. And so to cover those also, I'll also give you a nice little bonus setup that you can use against these other defenses. Now, that setup I'm talking about, I'll look at pawn to d6 as an example, is a kind of grand pre setup with pawn to a3 included. So, what is the grand pre setup? First, we go knight to c3 and we gain greater control of the d5 square, and we really are trying to clamp down on that. After black plays like knight to f6, we go bishop to c4 here. Once again, keeping this square defended more, and usually bishop to c4 in the Sicilian is a slight positional error because it walks right into e6 and d5. However, in this setup, we actually don't really care if black does that. And so usual development follows knight to c6, pawn up to d3 now, opening up the bishop, pawn up to e6, and like I said, we don't have to react to pawn up to d5 at all, we simply develop knight to e2 here. And the reason we go to e2 and not to f3 is because we're going to play pawn up to f4 here, and so like something like bishop to e7, they castle, or sorry, sorry, we castle, they castle, and now pawn up to f4. And this is the main sort of idea. We go pawn to f4, we're going to play knight to g3, pawn up to f5, potentially rotate our queen, and then try and get our bishop out onto the king side, and start an attack with potentially also a rook lift as well. So those are the basic ideas here. One thing to know is that after pawn up to d5, you want to back your bishop up to a2, and black has three main options in this position. Do they push, do they capture, or do they play some waiting move and play like pawn a6? First off, if they capture, this is usually never a good option for them because now they lose their center control and you simply take back the pawn. And you are not afraid of a queen trade here. Now we go into an end game or rather a queenless middle game. However, this is definitely preferable for us because black has a lot less development. This bishop is blocked out and we also have dominant control of the open file and there is really no reason for black to do this is not a very good variation for them instead because uh, capturing is usually not very good pushing up is the slightly better option but if they do this then you actually drop your knight back to b1 and at first glance this move probably looks bad why are we undeveloping the knight but now that d4 has came the other uh, surrounding squares are a lot weaker so then we will play knight to d2 and rotate it to either to f3, to c4, or potentially to play pawn up to e5, and then put it behind the pawn. All of those are very good options. And the last thing they can try to do is play some waiting move like pawn up to a6 here. If they do this, then you do not want to mess with the center tension. Simply play knight to g3, continue with their plan. And I think this generalized setup against all of Black's other options are a very good way for you to play. Simple, easy, good, attacking, fun positions. You can't really complain too much about that. So, that is what to do about um, any other moves. But if they play knight to c6, then now we go pawn to b4 here. 
this is the uh, gambit, and 95% of the time, they will capture, you capture back, and then they capture with the knight. This is the gambit, you are down a pawn in this position, however, they can also try to not accept the gambit, like pawn to e6, and not accepting the gambit is usually just not a very good choice. Uh, like I said, you'll almost never face this, but if you do end up facing it, then what you want to do about this pawn is you don't just want to leave it here because then they'll be able to capture back with the bishop, and a lot of our play will have been reduced. Instead, we push up to b5 here. If you watched my video on the Polish opening, you will have seen this exact same idea of going b4 and b5, and in both cases, this is not the engine's favorite choice, but practically it works absolute wonders, you get great positions, you're potentially going to go a4 and a5, and really take queen side space. Uh, nice little trap here, if they play knight to d4, then pawn up to c3, and the knight in the center is actually trapped. If you're a beginner, that's a nice little trap to keep in mind, but instead, knight dropping back to e7 is a slightly better move, and if they do this, then you simply play pawn to c3, and you continue with this gambit's main idea of going c3 and pushing up to d5 here, I mean d4, uh, but black's best option now is d5, you push up to e5, knight to g6 attacking, uh, knight to f3 defending, and after knight a to e7 and pawn up to d4, the game goes on. You are not down a pawn in this position, you have a advanced b pawn, which is both a good and a bad thing. It can get potentially weak, however, this uh, extra queen side space is actually very nice to play with, and usually black is going to have pretty much no experience in this arena. So, that is what to do if they uh, wily do not accept the gambit but most people will captures captures and knight captures as well by the way if they play like pawn to e6 or pawn to e5 in this position then once again b5 and you get a very similar position but after they capture you play pawn up to d4 not the immediate c3 it's actually a uh, much better you are immediately taking the center and the main line and black's best move and the most common move is pawn up to d5 here striking back in the center immediately, and I will get more into this position right in a bit. However, real quick, I want to look at their other options. They do have some other ones. If they play like pawn up to e6 in this position, then you simply go c3, they will drop back, and you can just develop normally from this point on. e6 is not a very challenging try. Bishop to d3, d5, pawn up to e5, now for something like bishop to d7, knight to f3, just castle, you have a good position. Even though black is up a pawn, they only have around 0.1 advantage, which pretty much is nothing. Black has extremely cramped development, we have a very strong center, and also because of our positioning of pieces, if black ever castles, you will have a very nice kingside attack potentially, and even potentially a Greek gift sacrifice with bishop takes on h7. So that is pawn to e6. They can also try knight back to c6 immediately, but this is not a very good try. You push up to d5 now. Knight will move. If they try knight back to b8, then simply like bishop to b5 here, because the idea of knight back to b8 is to go d6 and redevelop it to d7. However, by playing bishop to b5 and pinning the pawn, this is extraordinarily annoying for black to deal with, and you want to annoy your opponent, that is always nice. So knight to e5 here is the more played option. And after pawn to f4, knight drops back, knight to f3 here, and after something like d6 and knight to c3 here, you have a very good position. Once again, black is up a pawn. However, here we have much more compensation than we did in the other position. Here, black's position is extremely cramped. We have a massive center, and black's knight on g6 is horribly misplaced. You will have a fantastic time playing in this position. So that is knight to c6. And if they play pawn up to d6, then you have a very similar setup. c3 knight drops back and the move i'm going to recommend here is actually pushing up to d5 which might look somewhat surprising at first because we give up this square but you see we get a very similar position pawn f4 knight drops back 
and after knight to f3 here, we once again get a position where you are still down a pawn, however you have some very clear compensation, and I think you have great chances here. So, those are all the other lines except the main line move with pawn to d5, this is the most common. If they play this, then now you go c3, knight will drop back to c6, and you actually want to capture here, they will capture back the queen, and now an extremely tricky and best move, knight to a3. Now, this move at first seems a little odd. Why are we putting the knight on a3? Should we be focused on, you know, developing our pieces here and then immediately castling? The idea of knight to c4 is to reroute it either to b5 or to c4 and then potentially back to e3. And in this position, you have one of the most ridiculous trap rates I have ever seen. If black plays the most common move, pawn up to e5, the second most common move, knight to f6, or the third most common move, pawn up to e6, they all give you a much better borderline winning position after knight to b5. I'll examine each of those traps in detail and then I'll show you what black should play instead of that. So first I will start with pawn to e6 here. Uh, very clearly attacking our knight, but like I mentioned, now knight to b5. Very surprising move, a lot of people have this kind of blind spot, and we are immediately going for the c7 fork here. So they have to drop back, queen d8 is almost always played in this position. Uh, they can try bishop to d6 here to defend that, however here we have a very nice move, queen to g4. What we're doing with this move is we are immediately attacking the pawn, but we are also taking squares away from this queen. And after g6, we have a beautiful move here, bishop to c4. An incredible sacrifice, and we're actually completely winning here. If they capture the bishop, then now knight takes on d6, we get a very clear fork. But if they simply move their queen away, then now we can simply trade and then capture the bishop, and we are once again up a piece here with a completely winning position. So bishop to d6 does not work to the very nice queen to g4 here. Instead, uh, queen to d8, more commonly played move, and after bishop to c4 here, oh sorry, I got mixed up, bishop to f4 here, um, reinforcing this attack on c7, and this is actually incredibly hard to stop. Their only real attempt here is e5 to block out the bishop, and here the best line is to simply capture, and after they um, play bishop to e6 here, opening up their rook to see the queen, uh, trading queens would be a fatal mistake here, because now knight to c7 is simply unstoppable, so bishop to e6, and after a simple bishop to d3, black will likely go a6 here and attack the knight, and now you want to drop your knight in to d6. And after a trade here, at the end of the day, this is an even material position. However, positionally, you are completely winning here. Black has an extremely annoying d6 pawn they have to deal with. They have cramped development and less development. And we can simply play either knight to f3 or knight to e2. Castle, we have beautiful open lines. We have the great bishop pair. You have a fantastic position here. And if you can convert this, you'll win a lot of your games in this position. So that is pawn to e6, the uh, pawn to e6 trap. Let's also look at pawn to e5 now. If they play this, then now once again, knight to b5 here. Uh, bishop to d6 does not work because of the immediate bishop to c4. Very similar to the other trap. Um, if they capture, then now we get this. I mean, yeah, we fork them, we're winning. Instead, queen to e4, check is their best option here. But now we have a very nice knight to e2. And this might look a little odd. This is a non-forcing move. However, black's position is so bad, they simply cannot handle what is coming. Bishop to b8 is the best move and most commonly played. Uh, just drop the bishop back and keep this defended. And after queen to b3 now, 
we are threatening attacks on the f7 pawn and they have to defend it their only really good way to do that is queen to g6 or queen to f5 and here i would simply recommend to just castle and even though black is still up a pawn in this position once again we are completely dominating them positionally we'll soon go pawn up to d5 and black is simply not going to be handle our extremely great pieces I and mean, we have what four pieces out now black has this puny knight in the sad queen we have a great position here you are completely winning so that is the bishop to d6 line once again doesn't work instead queen to d8 is the main move and now pawn up to d5 here attacking the knight and it will back up knight back to d8 and now we have a very nice pawn up to d6 this is why i love chess the pawn it just keeps going and going and going and now knight to c7 check is extremely hard to stop with the corresponding fork and the pawn is defended their only real try here is knight to a6 but now we take advantage of the fact that we opened up the A file all those moves ago and we sack our rook on A6. They capture, knight to C7 check, king moves to D7. Important note here, you don't want to capture the rook immediately because then bishop takes on D6 and we've actually lost a lot of our advantage in this position. Instead, you have to play queen to A4 check first king captures and now you can simply capture the rook or the engine's favorite here is even to play knight to e8 with bishop to a3 bishop to c4 and you actually get a continued attack here also queen it to um g4 you can play either of these moves are both completely winning so that is the e5 trap let's now look at knight to f6 and this is the most complicated one I, I mean these traps you don't really need to know them that far in depth but if you do want to know them in depth then this is the one you will probably need to take the most uh, of a look at knight to b5 here once again queen back to d8 is the move defending this square also in a lot of these traps black can also play king over to d8 here and if they ever play a move like that, then I would recommend to simply just play knight to f3. And once again, you're completely positionally dominating, even though you're up, uh, or sorry, black is still up a pawn. Now they cannot castle. They still have awkward development. You have a great position. So if they were to play king to d8, that's what you do. But queen back to d8 is the much more played move here. And now instead of bishop to f4, because black would have the very strong knight to d5 attacking the bishop and defending the c7 fork, we instead have pawn up to d5. Attacking the knight, and it pretty much has to move knight over to e5 is what is always played in this position. They can also try pawn over to a6. However, this move does not work because of the pin. So we can simply capture, captures, captures. They cannot take the knight because the rook would be lost. So a6 does not work. Instead, knight to e5 is the main move. Now you want to go bishop to f4 attacking now black does not really have the luxury of playing this move and they have to defend this so knight back to d7 is what is always played here and now you actually want to go knight to f3 attack the knight again if they trade then after captures captures this is unstoppable i mean they can try e5 but now you have the very nice on passant they're lost so that does not work instead f6 here is the most common move to try and really defend the knight but now you have a very nice win here knight f to d4 the idea is we're trying to get into e6 and then both our knights will cover the c7 square and we will subsequently get the fork so knight to c5 here is played to try and cover that but now we capture on e5 they capture back queen to h5 check pawn up to g6 and now you capture on e5 you get this fork here, a fork of a rook and a square, rook to g8, knight to c7 check, you're completely winning. So that is the knight to f6 trap, those are the three unbelievably common traps, but now let's get into if they don't fall into the trap, and that is a6 here, which is pretty much always played by people who do not fall into the trap, simply defending this square like so. And if they do this, then now you want to rotate your knight to the other square, c4. Now, with this move, you are threatening to go into b6, 
and to get tactics on this fork and potentially capturing this bishop as well. So because of that, queen back to d8 is what is almost always played in this position. And now you want to push up d5, annoying black attack in the knight. It is forced to go back to b8 here or knight to a7, but b8 is the more commonly played and better counterpart. And now you go bishop to e3. You are threatening to move your knight or your bishop into b6 with a winning position. So knight to d7 here is the only move to protect that. And after knight to f3 here, the game goes on. You have very good very good compensation for the pawn. Uh, black has a very cramped position. If they ever play pawn up to b5, then now you have knight to a5. And your knight can go to the c6 square, which is always very nice. It's a great outpost to have. If instead they play like knight to f6 normally, then we just play normal as well. Bishop to e2 here is what I would recommend. However, you also have many playable moves. g3 and bishop to g2 is an idea. You can also try knight to e5 and then c4. That's another idea. And after bishop to e2, the best line for them is to try and go g6. And this is where the analysis for um, my end will about end. They will go bishop to g7, then castle. And once again, we have a good position. Black is still up a pawn in this position. However, you have a lot of dynamic advantage, positional advantage. Try to convert it. And normally here, you can just like castle, play on, play normal moves have a very fun time playing. All right, well, that about does it for this video. I hope you have a fantastic time playing this gambit and also watching this video, and I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time.